Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. I really wonder how many brain cells you got to be missing to take something you purchased back to the wrong store. Well, the personage in our first story managed to do that. My angriest retail customer with a twist. Got reminded of this gem from way back today. Enjoy. So I was working as a manager for an auto parts store. The story takes place about a year into my stay there. First, a little background to set the scene. The store's in the corner of a supermarket shopping center. We were at the very end around the corner. Next to us is a video rental store, the corner space. Next to that, the supermarket. Store opens at 8 a.m., clock in to start opening at 7 a.m. This day, I pull in around 6.45 to open, and there's a truck parked in the lot already. It's backed into the space across the lot from the front door, so facing the doors. There's a man inside drumming his fingers and looking pissed. I park, see my coworker pull in and park and get out to open the doors. As soon as the man in the truck sees my shirt, he jumps out of his truck and starts approaching the store carrying a paper grocery bag. Me. Sorry, sir, I'm just opening up the doors to start counting. I can't let you in until 8. Angry man. Fine, I'll deal with you then. Stomps back to truck and slams door closed. Great. Coworker meets up with me and we enter and start counting. By the time I'm loading the cash drawers into the registers, he's pacing outside holding his bag. Eight o'clock finally rolls around and I unlock the doors. I don't even make it back around the counter before I hear a loud bang. Angry man has kicked the front door open to the point the glass in the front of the store is rattling. He then stomps up to the counter and slams his grocery bag on the counter. It's obviously not light. It makes a loud bang. Outline in the bag is a fairly large box. Angry man. You a-hole sold me a bad alternator. My mechanic charged me six plus hours of labor to put it in, then take it back out. And you are going to fix this. He's yelling the entire conversation. Me. Look, I'm sorry you got a bad alternator. It happens every once in a while. We can certainly file a labor claim. But first I need to see about another alternator. Turns out to be off of van. Can't remember the make, but it was non-stocking, two-day special order, and around $300. I explain it'll take me two days to see one, and he proceeds to lose his mind. He's gone from yelling to screaming. What followed was him screaming expletives at me about the company I work for and myself. The employees from the video store next door are now peeking through the front window to see what the hell is going on. A customer that was going to come in the store is now with them outside, staring in. Me. Look, man, I've told you what I can do. Angry man, just give me my money back. I paid cash. This is a problem. The drawers have a set amount of money in the morning, and I can't access the safe deposits. I only have a small amount of extra bills in the change rolls. Me. I'm afraid I don't have that kind of cash right now. He cuts me off, screaming again. Angry man. So now you won't give me my effing money? Give me the effing corporate number, now! This guy is full-on, red-faced, pulsing veins, screaming. I've had it at this point, and I'm getting pissed. Coworkers ready to call the cops. There are now multiple customers gathered outside the doors with the video store employees, not wanting to enter and watching this go down. At this point, I snapped a bit. Me. Look, I'd be more than happy to give you your money back in the form of rolls of quarters, dimes, and nickels if it'll get you out of my store at this point. Angry man. Fine, do it. Me. Can I at least have the receipt? He pulls the alternator box out of the bag and slams it on the counter, then slaps down the receipt. I look at the receipt and the box for a good few seconds, then look him in the eye. At this point, I'm stone-faced and more than a little pissed. Me. You'll find not my store auto parts over the freeway behind the taco mill. He didn't even apologize, just stared at me for a second, snatched his crap off the counter, and walked out the door past the now fairly large group of people gathered outside. Wish I could say I laughed about it, but honestly, I was pissed for a good while about that. It was just way more crap that I got paid to shovel. Typing this, I still feel grumpy about it. The end. Dealing with angry customers can be challenging, especially when they escalate the situation to such an extreme level. The twist at the end, revealing the customer's mistake in store location, adds a satisfying element to the story. And our second story. Call me names and intimidate me at work? I'll humiliate you in front of a shop full of people. 
So this story happened one summer when I was younger and working in a mini supermarket type shop. The place I come from is by the coast and attracts lots of tourists over the summer who unfortunately tend to be rude, noisy, and as my un-PC grandfather would say, common as muck. Despite the poor pay and rude customers, I enjoyed the job. It was pretty easy, a relaxed environment, and the other staff were all great, plus it was money for university, so I was happy for the work. One particular afternoon, I was working on the till point at the front of the shop when a huge man in a wife beater vest who looked in his mid-thirties stormed in. Mind you, he wasn't fat, but he must have been about six foot four, absolutely ripped in muscles, covered in tattoos with a clean-shaven head. He was closely followed by a group of about four other men who all looked very similar, albeit with varying amounts of hair, and a particularly smug-looking bleach blonde woman hanging on his arm. Myself, being a 22-year-old, five-foot-six skinny girl, it was initially somewhat intimidating, especially the attitude they stormed in with. The bold man made a straight line for the counter, barging straight past an elderly couple on the way up to the till and physically elbowing a woman with a pushchair out of his way. When he reached the counter, he leaned over me and slammed the object in his hand straight down on the desk. It was a jar of the supermarket's own brand salsa dip. Before I had a chance to ask him what was wrong, he moved his face closer to mine. This effing jar you sell has been fused shut and won't effing open. I want my effing money back and some compensation for having to drive all the effing way back to your crappy shop, he yelled straight into my face. What's wrong with it? Sorry? I asked quietly, a bit confused about the anger over a jar of dip. Pretty much everybody in the shop had stopped what they were doing at this point, and I felt all of their gazes as they looked over. Open your effing ears! It won't effing open, he yelled back. Now, this made me angry. If somebody approached me nicely, I'd always do my best to help them out. But coming right in my face yelling, calling me names, and swearing was not okay. My boss was out on his lunch, and the only other people working were a 17-year-old girl, Chloe, and Lewis, who was shorter and skinnier than me. I knew I had to deal with this by myself. Would you like me to try and open it, I offered. He and his friend started laughing, and his girlfriend gave me a pitying look. No offense, love, but if I can't open it, some effing southern bee ain't gonna. I heard a small gasp from the elderly woman. See, this made me more mad. While I may not be big and intimidating, I quite regularly get referred to as feisty by my best friends and a string of ex-boyfriends. Not always in a complimentary way. Also, being a small woman lacking muscle and having lived on my own since the age of 18, I was well aware of all the little tricks of opening something which didn't want to budge without any help. No, let me try, I shot at him, finding some confidence. He laughed, stupid bee, he muttered to the vapid blow-up doll on his arm. She giggled. I took the jar and gently tapped the rim on the edge of the counter, looking him in the eye the entire time. One, two, three. All the group sneered and were laughing. I lifted up the jar and without breaking eye contact, gently twisted the lid. It popped right open. The laughing abruptly stopped. What the? One of his mates muttered. They all looked at their big, bold friend and started to laugh. The girl on his arm sharply detached herself and started giggling hysterically. You're the effing P word, mate, one howled. That lass is a quarter your size, another ribbed. He nervously glanced around. Not only were his friends in hysterics, but everybody in the shop was looking over, nudging one another and laughing at him. Slowly, his face went bright red, with the color stretching all the way to his bald head as he realized what an idiot I'd made him look. He shot his hand forward and grabbed the jar. The lid wasn't attached and fell off onto the floor. He quickly ducked down and grabbed it. As he got up, visibly humiliated, he grabbed his girl by the hand and practically ran towards the door, shoulders hunched and head down. But just as he reached the door, he looked back at his friends. I raised my hand, put on the biggest F.U. retail fake smile I could muster and yelled out, Enjoy your dip! in a cheery voice. Another wave of laughter erupted in the shop, and he dashed straight out. Call me names and intimidate me at work? I'll humiliate you in front of a shop full of people. And our next story. HOA President Parks in My Spot I live in a condo complex with an HOA. My grandmother owns the unit, and I rent it from her. When you buy a unit in this complex, you also purchase the assigned parking spot for it, and you get to use the visitor lot for one additional vehicle if needed. 
The way the units and design spots are arranged, my spot's the best in the lot. I get a park closer to my front door than anyone else, and it's one of the few spots where there's only one vehicle next to me. Well, the HOA president happens to live right next door to me, and their vehicle is the one that parks next to me, but for the entire time I've lived here, they seem to think that it's okay to use my spot when I'm not home without asking. There have been dozens of times where I've come home from work and have to wait for someone that I don't know to get out of my parking spot, and it's almost always someone who's there visiting the HOA president and family. About a month ago, reminder notices were sent out because winter's here. The notice outlined that assigned spots are only to be used with the permission of the unit's tenant or owner, and that offenders will be fined and repeat offenders may be towed. I know my neighbors saw the notice, it's from the association they're the president for. Here's the real kicker, they didn't tell us how to report or document the parking offenders in the notice. I have a sneaking suspicion this is a situation where the president doesn't think they have to follow the rules, and if they don't give me a way to report them, they think I won't push it. Don't worry, my grandmother's trying to find a way for me to report the people parking in my spot, and I started taking pictures to send to the HOA. And our last story. Car towed from my owned spot. The neighbor and I have had a nine-month discussion about a parking spot which is listed on my title and in the HOA docs as my spot. I own two, but one car. The spot I don't usually park in is closer to his house, and I can see why someone would look and think it's his spot, but it's listed as my spot clearly in writing. I have tried to play nice by saying that I don't care if occasionally a guest of his parks there or he uses it every once in a while. He never acknowledged it's my spot, but I thought we had an understanding. For me, the entire issue is that I want guest parking, and I don't want to ask permission for my guest to use my spot. The last few weeks, someone from his family has parked every day and night in my second spot. I was going to bring it to his attention, but saw the opportunity to park there last night. I go out this afternoon, I telework from my basement, and see that my car is missing. It turns out he had the car towed. I found out he did this because I called the HOA, and apparently he called them to complain. They told him if someone's in your spot, have the car towed, without checking to see whether the spot was owned by him. I called the tow company, and they passed the blame on to him. He isn't answering his door to talk to me, possibly out or hiding. My buddy's going to drive me to recover the car tomorrow. I'm furious about this situation, and everyone's pointing fingers. It took me four hours to figure out it got towed. I initially thought it was a theft, which made no sense. So I went to my HOA. I got a written letter from them stating it's my spot. He can't park there or tow. The HOA then sent him a copy of that letter, and I mailed him a copy via certified mail. Then I sued him in small claims court because he didn't pay the towing fee. The court was on my side. I had no problems with parking after that. It's unfortunate that you had to go through such a frustrating experience with your neighbor over a parking spot. It's also positive that the court ruled in your favor, emphasizing the importance of abiding by the rules and agreements set by the HOA Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.